Hunch Park was the park of my childhood. I grew up in this park. My grandparents lived across the way. So for me, this was a very personal project. Um, you know, a strong uh, family tie to the area. So understanding that from an architectural point of view, it was very important that we knew how this building would not only relate to the tennis courts, but how it would relate to the park. The psychology around a public building is that it needs to be very public. For us, it needs to be very open and used by as many people in as many permutations as possible. So it gives the most amount of architecture to the most amount of people. Even though the budget wasn't very big, how do you build a toilet that sat in this pavilion kind of way and that, that was able to withstand the rigours of being a public building? The weatherboards, again, that simple material reference from the area. A big, strong timber frame using high-span timber. The floor is concrete, so that will withstand the weathering. The steel gates, that's a material that is, is strong and robust that we can lock it up at night and protect the, the building itself, but then they slide out of the way and notionally they're quite ephemeral and they disappear. So the building just sits there as this little pavilion mediating between tennis court, pathway and park. Whilst a starkly contemporary building, I think the language of the materials is clearly a language of the materials that people can see on almost every street within this municipality. Also being quite small, we wanted it to be quite bright in a park, you know, that uplifting joy of colour, that great modernist tradition. But when we got into the toilet, uh, we were always looking for a lovely soft colour, something that was quite calming. Uh, and our response to that was this introduce this lovely pink tile that when you got in there, you know, you envelope with a nice soft colour around you. We then wanted to do, which is really the opposite of a lot of public toilet experiences that people have where you get these dark, dank, constricting spaces. What we wanted to do was do the opposite of that, lift it right up. So the, the white introduced this lovely modernist idea of new, but also that modernist idea of hygiene. But then that reaching space deliberately pulled the ceiling up nice and tall and gave it a skylight looking to the south so that that, that space would always had a lovely diffuse quality of light. Because it's such a small footprint, it's, it's very sustainable in and of itself. You know, being a public building, we hope it lasts for, you know, 50 to 100 years. So that's amortising that embodied in constructional energy over a long period of time. But just doing simple things. So, you know, having the skylight to uh, let the space naturally illuminate itself through the daytime, but also collecting the water that comes off the roof so we can use that for the gardens in and around the area. Respect for me, uh, it plays at many levels. The personal connection to the park, what parks mean in these dense urban areas, the quality of the architecture and giving to as many people as possible, allowing a design that um, would be, at the very least, when you go to the, this bathroom or go to get a drink, it makes you feel good to do that.